So, what is pH, and why should you care about it in your fish tank? How can you raise it? How can you lower it? We're going to talk all about that in this video. Hey, fish people, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's having a great day, morning, afternoon, night, whenever you're watching this. So, we're going to get a little scientific for a second. Now, that's unusual for me, but we're going to get there. Now, we have to in order to answer the question of what in the heck is pH. So, in chemistry, pH is the term we use that stands for potential hydrogen or power of hydrogen. So it's basically us measuring the concentration of hydrogen ions in a given substance. Well, you're probably still saying, what does it have to do with fish keeping and your aquarium and your fishies? Well, pH is basically how we measure the acidity or the basicness of the water that comes out of our taps and it's in our fish tanks. In other words, are fish swimming in vats of vinegar or are they swimming in nothing but baking soda? If you've read in the water test, you're going to notice that your little cheat sheet that comes with it is going to have a pH scale. It's going to go down to 6.0 and usually go up to like 7.8. Now that 7.0 is the sweet spot. That's pH neutral, which means most any fish can live in a pH of 7. If you have a pH of 7 at your house, you're probably one of the luckiest people if you're keeping fish. You don't have to do too much, and you can keep virtually everything that you're going to find at a pet store. There's, of course, a couple exceptions there. It's things like super low pHs are high. You'll have to do a little changing, but you're pretty much good for most things. So essentially, anything under that 7.0. So once you get to 6.9, you're acidic. Once you get to 7.1, you're basic. I'm not going to use any smaller numbers because usually we don't measure things except for the tenths. So I'm going to keep this as simple as possible to answer the question. Well, why should you worry about pH? Can't fish just live in any range water? Mm, technically, it's a yes and no question. You really can't give a straight answer to. Every fish has its preferred pH range. There's normally a little range of wiggle room with your water. If you're within a couple tenths of that pH, you're usually good. But it gets more complicated because every fish's tolerance is different and can be affected by pH shock differently. For example, a couple years ago, I got a couple of guppies that came from super basic water. Their water was up in the mid seven, so 7.4, 7.6. And you know, a typical guppy range we say is anywhere from 6.8 to 7.8. That's a nice range. Unfortunately, my tap water comes out at a 6.5 and typically settles after 24 hours to about 6.0 or a little less. Unfortunately, the tests that I have only go to 6.0, so I'm not 100% positive. It's also super soft, so I don't have a lot of calcium or other things in my water. Oh, I got those guppies. They got pH shocked, and they were dead within 72 hours. They went in the tank. They were doing okay. Next thing I know, they're just gone. Now, the drastic difference of pH from what they were raised in to what mine is is most likely what the cause was because the rest of my parameters were fine, and it was just too much for them to handle. On the other hand, I got a pair of guppies from Thailand that were in about a pH of a 6.6 .6 out under my water. They were fine. They had babies, tons of fry. And then, of course, those fry are growing up in my water, so they're used to the lower pH. I don't have to worry too much about it. Also, I want you to leave a comment down below before we get into the meat and potatoes. What is your favorite means of raising or lowering your pH if you have to? So now you might be asking, well, how can I help get my water closer to my fish's desirable pH range? Well, there's a couple ways to do this with both going up the scale and down the scale. The obvious answer most people are going to say is, well, just go to your pet store. Get the pH up, get the pH down chemicals. There you go. Use them. You'll be fine. Now, to me, those are a last resort now because I have found that if you even following the directions, you can have a drastic swing in pH and you're going to shoot too fast, you're going to miss that target point. You ever seen Armageddon where they shoot over that target landing zone? Think of it like that. You want a 6.8 pH and you've got a 6.0. You put just a little too much of that pH plus in there, you're over your 6.8 mark and you miss the mark and then you got to go the opposite way. The other problem is what's in them? When you get those bottles, they're not very descriptive. They don't really say what is in them. Well, typically in a pH down you're looking at some type of phosphoric acid, which is a phosphorus-based acid. It usually sits at about a pH of 2.14. It's going to depend highly on the concentration. It's probably a little higher than that if you're buying it at a local store and not getting the actual bottle of acid. And yes, they do actually sell bottles of acid, similar to liquid acid. If you go on the other side, 
pH up is made from potassium hydroxide, which again, depending on concentration, sits at about a pH of 13.5. Can come in a powder form or a liquid form, just depends on where you're getting it from. I have the Fritz pH buffer. That is a powder. I add that to my water to help with my African sales. And yes, I have personally used these both in the past. I still, in fact, have the original bottle pH plus when I got back into the hobby several years ago now. But then I found more organic or natural ways to accomplish the same thing and somewhat more gradually. So I would just prefer to do those instead now that I know somewhat better. Now, going up, in my opinion, is far easier than going down. So if you're like me and you have more acidic water and you want to keep something like African cichlids, say, which yes, I do have a tank of African Amunas and they have been living healthy now for about two and a half years. How did I accomplish this? My pH comes out at 6.5, settles at 6.0. What did I do? Easiest way, aside from a chemical, that I found to increase my pH, get it to a nice level that you're going to like, is crushed coral. You can get a bag, 55 pound bag of crushed coral will run you like 10 to 20 bucks, depending on the market and where you get it from. Personally, I just use the PetSmart brand and go that way. Crushed coral is exactly what it sounds like. It's just crushed up bits of coral skeletons, which are made of calcium carbonate. The cool thing about the crushed coral is when it comes in contact with acid, or in this case, acidic water, it slowly breaks down and it's going to raise the pH of your water up. There's a whole technical thing that happens with carbon dioxide and stuff, but I'm not going to get into that. So depending on the concentration, it typically has a pH of about 12. Downside with crushed coral, it's not a permanent fix. Over time, the coral will deplete itself. Now that rate of decay depends on the acidity of your water. So, so how long does it last? I've had the same crushed coral for two and a half years. My pH is steady. So how does that work? Well, once it reaches a certain point, it's going to stop breaking down and raising the pH. So mine settled at about 7, 5, 7, 6. It all depends. And it doesn't continue to break down until I reintroduce water when I do water changes. So it gets to a happy medium and just kind of stops breaking down. Add more acidic water, it breaks down again. The problem with this is since it eventually does deplete itself, what do you do? I use it as my main substrate in the tank. So I'm kind of SOL when it comes to being depleted and taking it out, which is why I use the Fritz buffer just to help make it last a little longer. That's why what a lot of people do is they will put it into a sock, a pantyhose, or a filter bag and just place it in the tank for easy access. A lot of people will put it in a filter bag, stick it in their hang-on bags if they use them, and that way when it's depleted, they just pull it out. Well, how do you know when it's depleted? When you do a water change and you notice your pH hasn't changed, it's depleted. You'll also probably start to notice if your fish are acting funky, you should probably be testing your pH anyway. I test the pH every time I do a water change just to make sure it gets back up. Usually within about 12-ish hours, since I don't do 100% change, the pH doesn't really change at all. It may drop to like 7.3, 7.2-ish, never lower than that, and then it just goes right back up, and the swing is really not that bad, and the fish are fine. There is also arcanite sand or rock. It does the same thing as crushed coral. If you don't want to use crushed coral, you want to use the arcanite, go ahead and use that. Some people will just use straight up baking soda. The ratio for that is one teaspoon for five gallons of water. Now, personally, if you're going to go that route, I would suggest testing it out in a five gallon bucket first, just so you can gauge how much you can need to get to your desired pH. Now, the opposite end of this, I find lowering your pH slightly more difficult and slightly more of a pain in the butt. One of the easiest ways that you can do this is adding something that's going to release tannins into your water. I did a whole video on botanicals and tannins and what they do and their benefits. I'll put a card here if you want to learn more about that. But basically, if you add driftwood, they're slowly going to leach tannins out, which is going to look like tea coming out into your tank. That's going to naturally lower your pH over time. Similar thing is going to happen when you use Indian almond leaves or various other leaves and cones and things. If you don't want to wait for that to happen, Fritz makes a great product. It is just concentrated Indian almond leaf extract. Basically, they must have soaked a bunch of Indian almond leaves and then just bottled it. So you can just dump that in. It's not going to discolor your water as much as if you use the actual leaves or driftwood. It'll also help get that 
pH a little faster. Now, another more interesting way I found when I was asking some of the more veteran people in the hobby about how to lower pH was collecting rainwater. Because rainwater is going to typically have a lower pH than what comes out of your tap. Why we call it acid rain. It's technically acid because it's lower than 7.0 pH. Now, you might be saying, why would you use rainwater? There's a bunch of chemicals in the air. There's bad things in there for my fish. You would be right. So you need to do a little prep work if you're going to do this. Boiling the water or pasteurizing it, keeping it at a certain temperature for a long enough time, it's going to kill any germs, microorganisms, stuff like that. Then your normal dechlorinators, typically a lot of them will say pulls out heavy metals and things like that. Use that. And then if you want to go one step further, I would say run it through a coffee filter or some other kind of filtration system if you want to make one. Now, as with anything, before you choose any of these methods, find the one that's going to fit best for you. Now, I'm just some random guy on the internet telling you tips and tricks that I've heard from veterans in the hobby or things I've done that worked for me. But I don't want to be the reason anyone loses fish. I'm here to help you keep fish better, not lose any. So please check at least two or three other sources for information besides just me. Think of it like you're writing a paper for your college class. The more sources you can get that agree or have similar opinions on something, the more credibility and validity that information is going to have. Also, remember, you don't really have to chase your pH like a mad lad. But if your pH is 6.0 like mine and you want to be a crazy person and keep African cichlids, you're going to need something that's going to help raise that pH. Most fish have a nice wide range of pH. You don't have to be a crazy person and sit there and say, okay, this fish comes from this specific delta of this specific waterway, and it has this exact pH, and I have to match this just perfectly. Because when you're trying to match everything perfectly, water-wise, temperature-wise, pH, all that stuff, you're going to go crazy. It's not going to be as fun anymore. So just don't chase pH too much. Get it as close as you can, but if you can't get it exactly the right way, don't stress too much about it. Well, the hobby's not going to be fun and relaxing like it should be. But that's all out of the way. I want to say thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please remember to leave a like on the video. And if you found it interesting enough that you think it might help someone else out, please do share the video. And I will see you all in the next one.